One and all, you are about to hear a fantastical Sicilian tale straight from the old country, told by none other than Tony Guayetta Ferra. Once upon a time in sunny Italy, there was a little old man, he was sweeping the church. He found a penny. He said, I know, I'll buy an orange, nice juicy orange. No, it'll be so sticky and messy. I know, I'll buy a little loaf of bread. No, it's so crusty and messy, I don't think so. I know, I'll buy a little bottle of milk. The little old man bought the milk, brought it home, and thought he would have it the next morning for breakfast. So he goes to bed, but while he was sleeping, the little Sudici mouse came and drank the whole bottle of milk. The little old man was furious. He picked up a knife and zing! He cut off the tail of the poor little Sudici, and the little Sudici started to cry, see you, see you, please give me my tail back. No, not until you give me my little bottle of milk back. Oh, I'll try. Stay tuned to find out what happens next. Will the Sudici get his tail back? My name is Sasha. That beautiful woman you just saw, that's my grandmere. At the forefront of all my childhood memories is the story of the Sudici, a grand production played out in the hearts and kitchens of dozens of family members, always told with love and respect for all who listened. Once a year, when I was growing up, my grandmother would come to visit. We would run all around the house looking for props so she could tell her famous Sudici story. After we gathered all the props, we'd set them up on the dining room table, my brother and I would sit right next to her as she told the story, and we would be entranced like it was the first time that we had heard it, although we had heard it a hundred times before. So you have a, a story, you have this oral tradition that's gone on with my great-grandmother, to my grandmother, to my parents, to me, and you know, someday to my kids. So you have essentially five generations understanding the same story, and it connects you. It came from her parents and from Sicily, and that was very important to her, uh, where her roots were, mm -hmm. and that story stuck with her about a Sicilian Sudici. I mean, Sudici is a mouse, being a mouse. And right. it was a very simple story, but it really yeah. affected us because of her expression, how she told it. Yeah. In the beginning, she never used props. In the beginning, it was just us gathering around her and her telling the Sudici story mm -hmm. and then after as we got older she started using props. I wondered if one story could make a difference. In an age of crowded schedules, press time, and a barrage of media, are the days of simple storytelling irrelevant? I decided to dig a little deeper. The value of stories these days is that it's a kind of entertainment where they're actually allowed to create their own images. You know, imagination coming literally from the power of the brain to create images. And one of the things that's happened, as I've told stories now over the last 50 years, uh, as I've watched when I work with kids, when they come up with ideas on their own, that in the last 20 years or so, all the ideas that they think of as original are all borrowed from some kind of mass media presentation. And that's University of New Mexico professor Dr. David Dunaway is an expert in the field of folklore and oral history. Where we feel we don't have any control or we really don't have a role in the world around us, but we do. It's a matter of taking the time to explore this world that came before. And often, this isn't done in print, this isn't done in videos, this isn't done in, in, in CDs and DVDs. It's done simply by sitting down with someone and learning their world by hearing the tales and the songs that they sing. Probably the most powerful tool humans have for solving problems is imagination. We need creative solutions. 
as the, as the uh, nature of the world unfolds more and more rapidly. We need people able to, able to think really quickly and really innovatively and imagine, visualize scenarios. And I think that, that the training of the human mind in that way is really important. We share this culture, and it's not the culture of Italy even, it's the culture of Farah. It is you the know? culture of Farah, and it stems from, so we talk about that it came from our great-grandmother. Yeah. We don't know past that, but really from, either way, it stems from one person and it branches out. So you talk about a family tree, a story tree, coming back to us. Let's pick up where we left off and watch how the story plays out. Mrs. Cow, Mrs. Cow, please, can I have some milk to give to the little old man? The little old man to give me my tail back? Moo, moo, I'm so hungry. I need some nice green grass. So the little Sudici went to the grass. The grass was all brown. Oh, please, please, can I pick some of you to bring to the cow? And the cow give me the milk, and the milk I'll give to the little old man, Siu Tziu, and he'll give me my tail back. Can't you see I'm so brown and dry? I need some fresh water. Oh, I'll try. So the poor little Sudici went to the well got to the well. Well, well, please can I take some water to give to the grass and give the grass to the cow and the cow will give me the milk and I'll give the milk to the little old man and the little old man will give me my tail back. Oh, I'd like to help you out, but I'm all broken down. I need someone to fix me up. So the poor little Sudici went to Mr. Carpenter. What will happen to the well? Will Mr. Carpenter be able to help? So we have eight other cousins. Sure. Who, if they have kids, that's, you know, 20 second cousins. And then yeah. they're going to understand that story. And it becomes this big family tale. And that's how we And it's a common, it. you're right, it's like a common, common bond. Common denominator. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get into it at all, you begin to see that the tradition that goes back millennia has been such a significant part of who we are and the transmission of culture and the development of the imagination is all tied into the oral tradition. Part of the importance of folklore is providing the, the threads that bind the family together. Uh, and then in the broader sense, it's the threads that bind a culture together. It's interesting how much more physical distance, literal physical distance there is between parents and teachers and kids now. Uh, and part of it is that, you know, um, physically, families tend to be faced, instead of towards each other, they tend to be faced in the same direction because they're faced towards the computer or the TV or the movie or whatever it is. They're enjoying something, but they're they're sort of faced away from each other. And, and this is all cliche stuff, but it's still true. Families used to eat together all the time, so it was all that face-to-face -face communication. Now families tend to eat separately. Um, and the physical proximity, I just think, creates a tremendous bond of trust between people and just generates uh, a warmth that's beyond a metaphorical warmth. But behind all of these, all the storytelling is the sense that the past is too important for us to lose. You don't want family history to die. And in order for that not to happen, mm -hmm. I think somebody always has to continue of teaching and telling stories. Right, yeah. A person doesn't really die until the stories are not told anymore about their lives. Continuing where we left off, we find the Sudici frantically seeking out Mr. Carpenter. Mr. Carpenter, Mr. Carpenter, could you please come and fix the well? The well will bring me the water. I'll bring water to the grass. I'll bring the grass to the cow. The cow will give me the milk. I'll give the milk to the little old man, and the little old man will give me my tail back. Oh. 
I'm tired. I'm hungry. I need food, Surichi. So the poor little Surichi, so worn out, went to the chicken. Mrs. Chicken, Mrs. Chicken, please, could you give me two big eggs so I can give them to Mr. Carpenter? And Mr. Carpenter will be strong and he'll fix the well and the well will give me the water. I'll give the water to the grass. The grass will be green. I'll bring it to the cow. The cow will give me the milk. I'll give the milk to the little old man and the little old man will give me my tail back. I'm hungry too. I haven't eaten. I need some food. So the poor little Sudichi went to the mill. Mr. Miller, Mr. Miller, please, could you please give me some chicken feed so I could bring it to the chickie? The chickie will give me the eggs. I'll give the eggs to Mr. Carpenter. Mr. Carpenter will fix the well. The well will give me the water. I'll give the water to the grass. The grass I'll bring to Mrs. Cow. Mrs. Cow will give me the milk. I'll give the milk to the little old man. And the little old man will give me my tail back. Yes, little Surichi. I will give you some chicken feed bus. You must earn it. You have to sweep the floor. I'll sweep the floor, I'll try. Little Sudichi, you better get busy sweeping out the mill. The importance of folklore, uh, it's to remind us of what makes us distinctive as a culture, as a community across time. The head of the Jungian Institute said, if you grew up hearing fairy tales, you never need a psychiatrist because the lessons that they teach, like uh, not giving up, persevering, will put you in good stance to make the journey through life. You should try to tell stories to your grandkids, even if they're a little bit fidgety, not sitting still. I think uh, sometimes things get absorbed and, you know, like kids are like sponges, they get absorbed with information. Oh, but there's more. Okay, ready? Yeah. Again, it, even if you don't think it's important, I, it's vital. The more we sit there and listen to the voices of the past, the more we have a chance to know who we are in a larger culture, in a larger context. It's as if we take this big world of ours with so many languages and so many peoples, and we remind ourselves of our place in that world. That's what a folktale can do. There is nothing like the kind of uh, energy that you get and can give with kids that don't think they're going to be there to really like anything and are doing you a favor to be sitting there. And within a few minutes, they're sitting forward and they're looking at you and they're drawn in. Uh, as a grandparent or a parent, you know your child or grandchild better than anyone else. So you know what they're afraid of and what they love and what they like. So when you're telling the stories, you can't help but customize them. And you can offer insights and uh, show directions that help that child. My father used to tell me stories about uh, the little people. He'd sit on my bed at night and these little people had problems very similar to my problems. Just highly encourage uh, grandparents and parents to tell their story to their kids, even if they think it's so boring. And um, Because as kids, you look up to your grandparents and your parents and as heroes, you know, and they are heroes because they raised you. It's not just the stories. It's also that someone cares about you enough to spend the time with you, to look at you, to tell you a story, and then this other aspect to be creative and, and share life experiences or imaginary experiences. So I think it's one of the nicest presents. It teaches them the importance of giving, of sharing what you have. My name is Tony Guayeta 
Farah. My name is Anne Elizabeth Farah. My name is Sasha Farashina. This is my story told to me by my parents. This is my family story of the Sudici. This is my family story, which was told to me by my grandmother. Now presenting Tony, also affectionately known to those near and dear to her, Grand Me. Mr. Miller gave him the chicken feed. He gave that chicken feed to the chicky. The chicky gave him the egg. Whoop! He gave the egg to Mr. Carpenter. Mr. Carpenter fried it and ate it and got strong. And he went and he fixed the well. And the well gave him water. He got the water, gave to the Grass. The grass got so green. Who do you give the grass to? To the cow. Wow, the cow ate it. It got strong. He gave him the milk. He gave the Everybody milk to the little old man. man. The little old man drank his milk. And then he gave him his tail and the Sudici was very happy, and the little old man was very happy, and they lived happily ever after. When are you going to roll? Are I've you rolling? I've been rolling for the last five minutes. Hello. Oh. Tale of a mouse who, uh... <laughs> it's really a, it's a scary story. It's like a dead mouse. Love this little Sudici mouse with that little tail. It just all comes to life. See you, see you, see you.